Hello friends, in this video we will learn about SQL injection. What is SQL injection? How can we use SQL injection to get unauthorized access to a website and what how can we prevent SQL injection on our website? So there is a lot to learn about SQL injection in this video. So keep watching this video. So as you can see this is a simple login form and if we enter our username and password here you can see we, we have successfully logged in to this website successfully since i know the username and password i have logged into this in this website but what if i don't know the username and password so if i think from a hacker's point of view i will try to find a vulnerability in this website that may with the help of which I can log in into this website. So I will use SQL injection. I will try different SQL injection payloads. So while trying different SQL injection, I came across a payload, which is I will try to guess the SQL query run behind the which uh, which is being run behind the website or on the SQL server so i came across this uh, payload which is comma dot r o r or uh, logical operator <coughs> one equal one double dash so what if i enter this sql injection payload in username and password here and click submit as you can see we have successfully logged into this website without knowing the username and password so what actually has happened here is that just look at the SQL query that is being run on the SQL server it is select ID from users where username is equal to this and this and password is equal to this and this so what I have actually done here is I have closed this uh, username part here by entering a single quote here and then you entered a logical operator or which means this or this only one condition needs to be true and you will get uh, if you know about the logical operators and or in the AND operator both the condition needs to be true and in OR operator only one condition needs to be true so in case of uh, legitimate username username should be this and password should be this only then you can successfully login into the website but what if I enter this SQL injection here only one condition needs to be true but here as you can see username is equal to has become blank since I have not entered anything I have just closed this open code by providing it another code so username is equal to blank or one is equal to one and this query becomes true and this part of the query gets run on the SQL server and this double dash this comments out this rest of the query so from here this uh, the selected query becomes useless and only this part select id from users this query will be run on the server so if you copy this entire sql command and run on this sql server let me say i think i made a some mistake here <laughs> so as you can see we got two ids so in spite of not knowing the username password we managed to get the results of our sql query with the help of our sql query so as i told you this double dash comments out the rest of the query here 
and uh, since we have not entered any username so this part will also become useless only this query this query is being run on the server if we run this query again so i made some mistake here from users okay or sorry it's my mistake only this part of the query will be run on the server so if we select go so as you can see you again got the result so this is how sql injection is done on the website I will also show you the practical demonstration of how SQL injection is performed on DVWA uh, Dam Vulnerable Web Application website. So just stay tuned. Uh, so okay, let's first see its demonstration here. Let us see the practical demonstration of SQL injection in DVWA, Dam Vulnerable Web Application. So just uh, check user ID if I enter one, it shows the first name and surname. So what if I enter one and a, uh, this uh, 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 what? I uh, what we say it uh, uh, like uh, a quote yes a quote and press enter so as you can see we get uh, we get an SQL, SQL error so it means that website is vulnerable to SQL injection so next step is to <coughs> find the number of columns so I will enter order by hundred so as you can see unknown column error <coughs> it means there are less than hundred columns present uh, 10 we get error on 10 let me try 8 5 three two so it means there are only two columns so we will form our SQL union SQL injection query union select <coughs> one two so now if we press enter we get the number of vulnerable columns so we get one and two it means both these one and two columns are vulnerable so we will you can choose any column for running your SQL command so if I if I want to check the <coughs> database name so for that I will uh, use uh, group underscore contact bracket dot database press enter so the database name is dvwa if i want to check the version so this is the version database version if i want to check the user you can check user so user is root at the rate localhost if i want to check the current user so i will use current underscore user as you can see it is root <coughs> so now our, ne our, our next step will be to find out the table name so we will use table underscore name from information underscore schema dot table underscore cons trains 
so as you can see we got the table names here <gasps> so for the purpose of demonstration i am going to use this accounts table so now we will check the column names number of columns in accounts table for information underscore schema dot columns where table underscore name is equal to accounts so as you can see there are <coughs> these are the column name, column names we are interested in username and uh, username and password so we will use username comma 0x3a this is a hex value for colon and a password <gasps> from table name and now comes the table name which is table name is accounts So press tenative name dot accounts doesn't exist. Okay, so we will go back. <gasps> so table name dot accounts does not exist. So we will use users table name users table name so these are the number of columns in users name users table so again we will use user and password <coughs> user comma 0x3a comma password from users so as you can see <coughs> this is the user and this is the hash value of the password so this is how you can perform SQL injection on any website now comes the prevention part so I taught you how X, how SQL injection takes place how to find SQL injection how to perform SQL injection now comes the prevention part <coughs> so this is the coding of this uh, SQL injection forum so what we can do to pass to prevent sql injection on our website we need to validate and sanitize the user input this is the first step and for this purpose we can use uh mysql function mysqli underscore real escape string <coughs> this is the function and it takes two parameters one is the connection object first is the connection object and set user input so I will use this same here now let us refresh this page again now if you try if I try to run SQL uh, commands on the server I won't be able to log in so now I got this incorrect username and password because as you can see this MySQL real escape string has <gasps> escaped this uh, comma character and therefore this or logic will not come into play and the query will not 
the query will not be successfully run on the server and this is how this function uh, protects our website from SQL injection because it sanitizes the user input now but this uh, function isn't is not foolproof this function does not give you foolproof protection against SQL injection we need to use uh, we must use parameterized queries or prepared statements on our coding in order to prevent SQL injection so I will in this uh, tutorial I will show you how we can use uh, the prepared statements to prevent SQL injection on our website so let me show you first so uh, let me undo the changes okay so If I press enter again, if I enter the payload again, as you can see our SQL injection is working. So now we will use para prepared statements. So let me show you how we can use prepared statements to prevent SQL injection. So So we will use a function mysqli underscore prepare and it takes two parameters first one is connection object and another is sql query so next uh, we need to replace it with the question mark so we will enter here our question mark this question mark is called placeholder you know next step is uh, You will use a function is underscore object statement if this is object if this is successful in short then we will move on to the next step which is another function by uh, my, my sqli underscore statement Bind per hour. takes two parameters. This is because both this username and password are string, therefore, I have entered string two times. Now I will enter username password
now we will execute our query let me first write the <gasps> prepared statement then let then i will explain this entire coding to you let me first finish it okay so i have written my uh, written the entire uh, prepared statement here so let me explain this entire statement one by one <coughs> so this is the query so instead of uh, entering this username here i have added question mark which stands for placeholder which acts as a placeholder then I have used my SQLI prepare statement. It takes two parameters. First one is connection object. This and second one is this SQL query. It gives us an object statement. So this is object function checks if this is an object. This variable is an object, then this query will be run. So if this is successful, then we will move further with the statement. So by SQL statement by param. First parameter is uh, the statement and the second parameter is what is the data type of this username or password. Since this is both username and password are string type, so I have entered string two times here. Next one is statement by SQL statement by param bind result its first parameter is statement itself and second is the data we get by running this <coughs> sql query so since uh, there are id username password enable that's why i have added four variables here first one is user id second is username third password and fourth is email at the in the same order as it is in the database so these uh, when this if the query is successful then these uh, <coughs> result will be stored in these variables respectively and uh, this basically statement execute function executes the sql statement this function basically statement store result stores the result this fetches the result and my SQL statement of rows checks the number of rows returned. So if the number of rows is greater than or equal to one, then it means you are successfully logged in. Is equal to zero. <coughs> Let me make a correction here. If it is equal to zero, then it means you have entered incorrect username or password. So let me refresh this page. Now, if I if I enter the legit username and password, uh, I got an error here. The prepared statement byte parameter. Uh,
I made some mistake here. Let me check. Let me debug this code here. So it is working fine. I, oh, I made this mistake. I should have used sterics instead of using ID parameter. So this is the silly mistake. Sorry for this mistake. Now the query should run perfectly fine. Okay. So as you can see we have successfully logging successful channel so if i use to the uh, another username which is demo user <gasps> and his password is password two three so login successful demo user so if we enter our sql injection payload again and try to log in then we get this incorrect username and password error so this is how you can use prepare statements in your login form to prevent SQL injection in your website so I hope you must have got something to learn from this video 
So <gasps> Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and uh, if you did, did not understand something then you can comment below and uh, see you in the next video thanks for watching this video